This podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, and you guys know how much I love Squarespace. In fact, I use it for my own website, adamlearner.net. If you guys want to save 10% on your Squarespace and domain, use the code ADAM at checkout, A-D-A-M, and you'll save 10%. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Brooklyn Photoworks ISO 320 podcast, and this is episode three. In this episode, we take a deep dive into medium format. And we not only talk about medium format digital, we talk about medium format film. Now, I got into medium format digital shooting, I guess, uh, I don't know, maybe early like 2012, 2013. I bought a Hasselblad H3D231. Man, that is a freaking mouthful. Um, It was something that I'd been looking at and kind of lusting after for a long time. Um, I had I had full frame digital cameras. I was shooting those professionally, but I just wanted something that would kind of elevate my look, uh, the look of my photos, and kind of bring something else, you know, in a whole other dimension to the table. And I remember like the, like the first files that I pulled off of that camera, I was like, holy shit! I mean, my mind was just blown. You know, just the the color and the detail and the depth and the separation. I mean, that medium format look that everyone talks about, yes, that was something that I saw right away. And um, yeah, you know, there's going to be people out there, oh, you know, the H3D 231, that's cropped medium format. It's, you know, 1.3 crop. It's not full frame. You know what? Who gives a shit? Okay. The files looked absolutely incredible. Now that camera also had a CCD sensor, that original Kodak sensor. So the colors were incredibly vivid, unbelievable detail. I mean, literally the photos just straight out of camera looked incredible. They had a life of their own. Now, some of the shortcomings of shooting that with that camera, of course, were the fact that uh, with the CCD sensor and with medium format, you really can't shoot high ISO. I mean, I think 200 ISO was like pushing it. And if you could get away with shooting 400 ISO, <clears throat> that was a lot. Um, now, granted, I shot that camera everywhere. I took that camera into the studio. I took it on location. It didn't really matter. I shot it everywhere, all over the place because I just I just loved that look. And uh, at the time, I was shooting a ton of life, fashion lifestyle stuff, and I was shooting a lot of portraiture with that, and anything that I shot with that camera, I love. And even to this day, when I go back and I pull up those files from that camera, I'm always blown away at the quality that I got from those. And uh, since then, you know, I, I've, I've had a bunch of other medium format digital cameras, um, some phase cameras, some, you know, phase backs with uh, Hasselblad bodies. Um, I had a Leaf Credo system for a little while. I tried out the Fuji medium format systems, uh, the mirrorless, you know, because everything's going mirrorless, you know, like right now, uh, I cannot ever see myself buying a DSLR again. I love the Fuji stuff, the 50R and the 50S or 50S and 50R if you want to go in order of how they came out. I think they're both fantastic. I think the files are great. Um, a little bit slow for my workflow. We'll touch on that in the podcast. I've tried out the GFX 100. I was completely blown away by that camera. You can see my review, my YouTube review and image samples with that camera. That camera absolutely blew my mind. And um, if money were no object and I could add that to my arsenal, I absolutely would because that thing just performs incredibly well. The files were gorgeous, detailed, beautiful color, beautiful skin tones, beautiful rendering of skin tones and color. So really an exceptionally cool camera and kind of a preview of things to come because the whole mirrorless camera thing is really evolving very, very quickly. We're definitely moving away from DSLR. So I could definitely see how, you know, other manufacturers uh, are potentially going to jump into that arena as well. Um, film medium format. I love shooting medium format film. I've got a Rolly Flex. It shoots square um, negatives. Um, I, I think that the f- images are incredible. I love shooting that. It's a whole different mentality, just like it is shooting with medium format digital. Everything slows down. You don't have the same kind of um, you know latitude that you do shooting, let's say, with like a Sony A7R4 or three or whatever. It's just going to be lightning fast and focus really fast. You really have to slow your whole workflow down. But the payoff that you get with the look of those medium format files is absolutely incredible. On this podcast, I'm joined by our co-creator, Daniel Silbert. I've also got our good friend, Mark Holstein. He's hailing from Germany. And we've got a new buddy on there, Matt Carr. Matt, who I met at a Leica event in Soho, New York. He's a fellow um, Leica shooter, and he's also been shooting medium format for ages. 
and he'll give you his whole story as well. So it's a really fun podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, Please subscribe to this podcast. Please follow all of us on Instagram. Please also follow me on YouTube. As I've said before, this is a work in progress, so we welcome your comments. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. All right, guys, so we are back. And we are in the ISO 320 podcast. We actually came up with a name, ISO 320. Um, we like that. There's kind of an inside joke for any of you like a shooters out there. You would op- absolutely identify with ISO 320. Um, but this is a, I guess, brought to you by Brooklyn Photo Works um, and uh, our new podcast, ISO 320. Um, This is a podcast that um, I started with my good friend, fellow photographer, Daniel Silbert. Um, Daniel's an amazing photographer, and we've been friends for about a decade now, and we've been talking about doing this podcast, and what better time than when we are isolated during this pandemic. There's nothing better than being able to connect with fellow photographers. I've also um, brought in a good friend, fellow photographer, Mark Holstein. He and I have had a dialogue um, actually online for years, like-minded photographers. He's an amazing photographer, shoots motorcycles and weddings and events and all kinds of great stuff. Um, And we've also got a special guest today, Matt Carr. And I met Matt at the Leica Soho store at a Leica event. Um, And we just kind of got into talking. I think he was wearing an M10 or I was wearing an M10 or we both had our M10s or maybe even we weren't wearing them. We just started talking about shooting. And um, then he started telling me that he's predominantly a medium format format shooter. And I kind of came from, you know, shooting medium format for a bunch of years. And, you know, just a lot of a lot of kind of common ground came up. And then I went and checked out his work and I was like, holy shit, this dude shoots some great stuff, um, shoots uh, celebrity portraits, um, all kinds of portraiture, editorial and magazine. I hope I'm not leaving anything out. Beautiful lighting. So, you know, I was uh, like, all right, this dude's totally legit. Um, and, uh, of course, I knew just from the short time that we had a chance to chat that we would definitely want to have him on today's podcast. So I was thinking that, you know, since um, Matt is a medium format shooter and we all kind of love medium format, that today we could kind of dig our dig our heels deep into the whole medium format shooting realm because... For so many photographers, it's like the holy grail. Um, Some people think it's completely unattainable, but all of us in one way or another have shot medium format, whether it be film or digital or both. So uh, that's kind of where I thought we could get things going today. All right. Thank you for the kind words. Definitely, man. And thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Oh, sure. I'm here all week. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, where do you, where, where, where where, do you where, want to start? Where should, we, where should we start off? We can start off anywhere. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things like, okay, you know, what attracted you to shoot medium format and why are you still shooting medium format digital in today's, you know, day and age? And, and you're shooting, you can kind of elaborate on what you're shooting, but why even, why even bother shooting medium format when you can buy a 40, 50, 60 megapixel full frame camera? Yeah, I'll I'll take that one backwards. Okay, great. Uh, I I'm I'm sort of shifting away from medium format at okay. the moment. I sold most of my Hasselblad just like two weeks ago. I, all I have left is the Phase One back. Okay. So I only use it when I get a job where they need it, kind of thing. But initially, I had it. I'll, I'll jump to the past. My whole portfolio is built on Hasselblad film cameras ah. so that when the digital when i i was working in prague in london and it was all film back then until 2000 i would say or 2003 2003 i came to new york and everything's all digital and uh no one wanted to wait for a film or pay for it so i had to jump into digital and at that time the 35 millimeter cameras just weren't good enough the, the portfolio would have looked like there was a, a split between the, the high quality medium format negatives into this like kind of pixelated whatever it wouldn't be pixelated but it wouldn't be very good so i was kind of it kind of forced my hand to get to, to go into the phase one world and uh take a little business loan to get that but i never regretted it. it's a beautiful camera and i used it until 
last year, I would say. Which, uh, which phase? Which, which uh, P45 plus. Mm-hmm. So nice. vintage at this point. We should, uh, we should talk. <laughs> uh, I have I have it right here in my drawer, waiting waiting for you. But it, no, it's fantastic. It's just kind of clunky, and I have the H2, and everything was getting old. And and to be honest, no one commercially, no one asked for it. Right. And when they did ask for the last commercial job where they wanted huge files, I had to get the hundred megapixel back because yeah, they wanted it was a billboard, and they wanted three quarters. But yep. you know, go ahead and shoot the full body, which is something I hate to do. Yeah. Because you can't, it's hard to connect when you're 15 feet away. Right. So I, I couldn't even use my camera anyways. So I, I just kind of, after a while of having it in the closet, I just thought I should tr- trade that in and get something I use and enjoy more. So the last few things I shot for the portfolio were actually with the M10 or with the uh, Canon 5DS. Which oh, nice. High res. After you, yeah, after you give it some nice polish, it looks great. It's my daughter. Hey. How you doing? Hi. What Jumping on the podcast. It's like that BBC thing. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, just, just you know, interestingly, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt the same way when I, I my first um, foray into digital media format was a Hasselblad H three D two thirty one, and um, and I had a few lenses with it, and I shot it commercially. I shot actually all the fashion lifestyle stuff that I was doing at the time, and I shot it on location anywhere. I was shooting bands. Yeah. I was shooting portraits, everything pretty much, whether it was studio or location, whether I was lighting it or tethering or whatever, was yeah. with that system. And um, I didn't give a shit that it was like this old clunky system. And I kind yeah. of evolved into a few other systems. And I had like a phase, you know, if P40 plus, P45 plus with the H2 body, very similar yeah. to you. And I can't even think about the idea of going back to that system right now, <laughs> how much of a fucking pain in the ass it would be trying to tether yeah. that thing and batteries and restarting the, the thing. Oh, yeah. That. I've got 20 batteries and three of them work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the, la- the last time I used it, I brought it out on a job. Well, it was a personal job, but I had that, and a friend of mine lent me a Sony camera, the AR760 some megapixel thing. Uh, which is beautiful, but they, they if they could take away half the buttons, I'd yes. be happy. Very yeah, confusing. Totally um, agree, yeah. But that uh, hotspot, it was like, you know, you, the screen, you could barely see anything. It's, it's clunky, and it, once you get the image, it's, it's amazing and creamy and nice, and you can push and pull it all you want. But that Sony is just, you know, it's got the, you can tell it to, tell it to focus on monkey eye, you know. It's, it's, it's automatic. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the files are pretty similar. Yeah. So... And after you get done with all the retouching, who's going to know? Exactly. I don't care. Yeah. So, I mean, if I had all the money in the world, I'd go get another phase back and a new house of blood, but I'd also have somebody carry it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss that. I mean, one thing, I, I recently um, was able to borrow a GFX 100 Fuji, the 100 megapixel. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it was awesome. And um, those files are actually incredible they're beautiful yeah. the skin the way it renders skin and skin tones is gorgeous you know it's got that really yeah. kind of classic it almost reminded me of like the p40 plus you know like really really detailed but not like clinically sharp um, right yeah and the colors science i loved and the thing about that fucking camera is that it's got iaf and in-body mm-hmm. image stabilization and a really fast yeah. processor so you can shoot mm-hmm. that thing like a sony to, a, to an extent it's not nearly as you know fast as a sony but you can shoot it you can so for somebody like you who still wants medium format that could be a potential option for you because you can shoot the shit out of that thing and yeah i've been looking at that you can tether right into capture one seamlessly i would say that does have a medium format look i'm I'm shooting the the small gfx the 50 megapixel and i love the rendering of that and it's definitely a difference between um like 35 millimeter and um, this that sensor. Yeah, I mean, I had the, rendering. the, so, 50, the 50S and R for yeah. a year and a half. And uh, and yeah, the 100 is amazing. Uh, I shot it for a weekend and actually did some motorsports with that as well. And yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having a camera, but I couldn't crank out that money. You know, it's... Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, if, but if you compare that to buying into a phase or a yeah, hospital system... Yeah. It's 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 so much cheaper, and and you can also adapt lenses. Like a good buddy yeah. of 
Daniel of mine, he's shooting with the Contax um, 80 millimeter F2. It's a manually focused lens, but man, the classic look that you get on that on you know with that media, with the Fuji body um, looks fucking you can, great. You can use it with autofocus on the GFX. There's an autofocus adapter. Yeah. Oh, you can. So you don't even oh, have to manual. Me. How did <laughs> so, I know? It's... <laughs> so for Matt, like this, I'm telling you, dude, like the GFX 100 for somebody like you who's been shooting medium format their whole life, that will that have could be a game changer. Have you used the 50s, because... Matt? Uh, the 50s. Which one? Yeah, it's the GFX. That's the small, the, uh, the older one. I haven't used any, haven't used any of those. Any. No, no. Okay. I think you might like it. But if you're accustomed to I, getting like billboard sized photos, yeah. like, well, those are know, only on ad jobs where they somebody else is paying for me to rent that camera. Rental, so, yeah. yeah. So. But you could sh- you can shoot the GFX 100 like a DSLR, because yeah. unfortunately they haven't put that technology, that sensor. I mean, or the speed and all that stuff, and the IAF and the the I um, the in body image stabilization. They haven't done that with the 50 megapixel body, so you can only get that uh, with the 100. There you megapixel go. I gotta body. say, you you, you have the body's like IAF and the 50, but it's not really fast. But yeah. you have the option. <laughs> the, frame, <laughs> it's, the frame is per second. The buffer on that camera is it's, pitiful. Well, yeah, it, if it's you're better used to than you probably blood. think. Yeah, yeah, it's probably lightning fast. Then. Yeah, compared to a Hasselblad H2, yeah. it would be, whoa, what? Yeah, what? yeah probably. With the so, light goes, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's also like a difference in perception, because Adam, for example, he thinks that the, the 50S is too too slow. And I, I'm i totally comfortable, comfortable shooting events with it, you know. I yeah, yeah. shoot weddings with it. I even shoot like motorcycle race stuff with it. So I'm cool yeah. with it. I think for, it just for, me with, for me with the 50, uh, with the 50 S and R, uh, when I got the 45 millimeter lens, sort of it was a game yeah. changer for me for that camera. I was able to use it because uh, before that I had just the 110 2.0. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And when I got the 45, it gave me so much more flexibility with that system. And, yeah. um, you know, I ended up getting rid of the system, but it wasn't because I didn't love it. I just happened to love a uh, uh, monochrome more at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, if if I could afford to have an extra camera body right now that I would use occasionally on the jobs that warranted it, I would absolutely, without any question, have a GFX body. And the reason why I I don't have one is because I just don't have enough jobs that I'm billing against that system. But it it, it, will. (laughs) Yeah. Is B and H still open? Online. (laughs) Yeah, there's yeah, sure. good deals to be had right yeah. now. When they close, we're, we're in a real trouble. Up, actually, yeah. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. Then the sales start to happen. Yeah. Oh my God. Now I, I've been trying to use kind of just break it down to what I really enjoy using and what works for me best. And I'm trying not to think right. outside of what's in the house because I got so much crap already. You know. Yeah. And no. like, I think we the, all sort of suffer from that. Yeah. We all, yeah. Yeah. And also, like the the amount, uh, quality, like the better quality you're gonna get from one of these other ones, is it great enough? It's like you know, difference between a twenty dollar bottle of wine and a five hundred dollar. Which one's gonna be? Is it gonna be that much better? <laughs> they I all do the same thing, thing right? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing with the with with the GFX, for example. I shoot it because I really like it. I like the rendering. Yeah. But would the client actually know, or you know? I don't I, think so, you know. I, I, be, I believe, at least when I had the Hasselblad, that there's some kind of lizard brain activity. Even for people who don't understand what they're saying, they know there's there's like a level yeah. of, I don't know, saturation or depth in it that yeah. is getting through to their unconscious. At least that's how I justified it. <laughs> I mean, I, I love the... I, okay. I mean, I, when I shot with my Hasselblad, I felt that... I, f- I just felt a little bit more connected to what I was yeah, doing. A little bit slower. And I was taking more yeah, time. Right, right. Just like in the yes. old days when you have a Polaroid, you'd do a Polaroid and you'd fix 10 things. These days, you take a picture, oh, you fix one thing, you take another picture, you fix another thing, and it takes you 10 times as long because you're not really, it's so cheap and easy. You don't, you, you don't have to really focus on the whole thing because you're not wasting film. You're talking about like adjusting things yeah, to like get your, wardrobe your image or to look the way face you want it. or lighting, whatever. You just kind of 
slowly right. correcting things. But in the old days, if you had to pay for the Polaroid, each one you'd do one, and then like you'd look at all the things oh. that are wrong with it, and then go through and fix those. And then there might be more because there was such an economy uh, yeah. to what you were doing because you were using a totally different. Yeah, medium. now I can get halfway through a shoot, and there's just something stupid I didn't notice as I go. There you go. Again. Well, you that can fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I fucking hate so much is like, you know, when you're shooting and, and then somebody on the set's like, oh, you can, you know, like, you know, will you Photoshop this? Will you Photoshop that? It's like, we're not shooting for the edit people. Like, we're shooting, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure all you guys feel the same way. It's like when I shoot, I, I want to shoot the best, cleanest image that I possibly can make. I'm not shooting thing like, ah, whatever. I'm just going to put that in post. But yes, I'm going to pu- put it in post, but I'm not yeah. shooting with the mentality that but I'm just going to do a, a mediocre job. Sometimes at a wedding, edit it. it's so fast paced that I notice something. But for me t- to change that, mm. to yeah. then shoot it, it's quicker for me to say I can understand my skills, which are not that great in Photoshop, but whether or not it's something I'm able to work with after quickly or something I need to actually take the time to change. And, Right. You know, it's probably a 50 50 toss up whether or not I want that extra three minutes, which can be crucial. Um, so, Daniel, do you miss a, do you miss a lot of shots that, when you shoot sorry. weddings with the, with the M10? I don't find myself, I don't really think I do. With um, the M10? Okay. What, what lens are you use in that? So, I, I, um, I miss a lot of shots and I'm just doing street portraits. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I, use, I, like uh, focus, I use. I like to focus on the ear. On the ear, problem. right? Or yeah. the back eye, you know. Yeah, I just right. Yeah. Could be your uh, my, my lens was off. off. My, my old thirty-five. I had about ninety-five, nineteen ninety-five. Right. I I used it for a year. Then I sent it in to get checked, and it was way off. It came right. back a different lens. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, so I exactly. almost, almost anything I that buy. Happens, all of us. I just know that I'm just going to bring it over to Leica and have them look at it <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the odds are he, the, the guy never comes out saying. This is perfect, man. It's always no, never. It's always <laughs> well, you know, it's sort of in the limitations uh, and acceptable yeah. range. Uh, anyway, yeah. so I I usually use the fifty Simulux. Um, okay, that's I, one everyone tells me I need. And yeah, I, I, I love yeah, that. It's oh, an dude. amazing lens. Um, and, and they actually, it's like medium format. And they actually rendering. calibrated it for me, especially to be a one four. Yeah, uh, so I like to shoot it wide open. You mean um, at the um, the place in Jersey or yeah, the um, in Jersey? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean the the Sumalux has that three dimensional rendering that the out of focus regions are just so fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Skin tones look super smooth and creamy. It's sharp and detailed I, without being clinical. I, I mean, this, yeah. we could sit here and wax poetic <laughs> I, I, for the I, I next actually, hour on this lens. To, it's to that merge good. the GFX conversation and the this M10 conversation is I had a campaign for um, an eyewear company last summer, and I just got the M10, and I had the 50 Sumalux, and I had my GFX system with the 45 and the 110. I never took the GFX system. Actually, I took it out for about three frames, and I was yeah. like, I was like, no. Nah. <clears throat> And I put it back because the oh, first test wow. shot I did with the 50 Sumalux, I was like, I never, yeah. I, I have no reason to pick up any. I did the entire campaign with a 50 and nice. I moved in, I moved out <laughs> and I couldn't have been happier where that's when I was like, you know what? I don't see it. The image quality is so gorgeous and different than what I've had. The same sort of way the GFX renders in a, in a different way. Um, that's that's uh, quite interesting because, like, uh, when I shoot like new, new product shoots, I shoot everything with the GFX and then just some small details with the M10 and the Sumilux. So maybe like five photos or maybe ten. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice, but uh, I'm too scared to miss a shot or you know to not nail that and then. But I also, I mean, to also merge in the autofocus conversation, uh, you know, I do have an autofocus camera on me. Uh, the battle is which one is the best, but, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, so if there's something I know and in a wedding day, I can, after doing it for almost 10 years, I sort of, you know, yeah. can sense when something quick will be happening. Um, and if I have a tighter, like a 50 lens, that may not be the camera I go to to get it. Um, if I have a 24 or my 21 on, um, you know, it's a lot easier to, to nail focus. But yeah, yeah you oh, miss yeah. shots. I miss shots with my autofocus cameras. 
look shooting the shooting the 50 lux wide open that takes some practice i mean when i first you know got that system up and run i mean the whole reason why i got into the m system was for the 50 lux you know yeah. i just i saw you know i was looking at a lot of people's work and just kind of i'd been thinking about it for a long time long time and finally i was like that lens is why I want to shoot the M system because it's the closest thing to that medium format three dimensional look you can get in this teeny little weeny compact thing that you can take with you everywhere you go, anywhere you go. And and that whole idea, that concept in my mind was like like fucking uh-huh. mind blowing because I wanted to be able to have that in my pocket, not in my pocket, but you know, with me at all times, and 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 I do, and and then since then I've kind of gotten a little sick and bought a few other. Yeah, M9 Adam's conversation well. yesterday was, I actually I've, haven't even touched my M10 since I got the M9. <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the M9 is you know has such a unique yeah. look. Matt, you know, I color wise, I had that, the M9 um, for seven years or so, um, and then had a like a break for about a, a year. But um, yeah. the M10 was just a breath of, you know, the flexibility it, it, it gives me um, yeah. in, in low light yeah. conditions. It's just where the M9 has its legs chopped off, the M10 just will, like, power through. And Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I had, put it. I had the M6 from, I've got that in 1995 and used that for probably 10 years. And then I kind of put it away with digital. And I was waiting for, like, it to come out with something. And it was the M10 was the first one that was... Like the same size, and I mm-hmm. actually had the money for it. And it yeah. was, uh, yeah, then that was. You saw the, you saw the episode. Episode. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I can never, <laughs> never get rid of that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, we talked about this. The, the thing that's so freaking awesome about Leica is that the M mount has been around since the 50s. So you can literally take any film or digital camera from the 50s on and any lens from that era, and they're yeah. all interchangeable. Yeah. Amazing. Should we ask so, Matt uh, his yeah. thoughts on, on my, on my yes, dilemma? Um, it's want, not dude. a dilemma. Um, so oh, I, I love this. Is this the I, Oprah part of the show? This is, this is the Oprah. <laughs> this is the aha. No, what is it? The aha moment? Um, no, I am working on a deal f- to trade my Q2 for an MP. Okay. Um, and I had to sort of get on the phone with him and, and work it out a bit because he listed... He had two MPs. One was perfectly brand new, basically, and one was a bit brass that he got about four months ago. And he wanted to sell both of them. Now he only wants to sell the brass one. Um, but there's some money difference between it's not an even trade yeah. to, for the Q2. Um, so I spent about 20 minutes on the phone with him trying to see where he's at and try to make this deal happen. Because you know, if it was tough to make deals and sell gear... Yeah. A month ago, a year ago, it is <laughs> a thousand times harder to to make a deal because yeah. you, you don't know what tomorrow brings in, in this in this time and next week. If you know his wife's going to have a job, if my wife's going to have a job, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. but so um, so I'm trying to because I could part with the Q2 and pick up an MP, um, and then probably figure out another move. But along that road to get back to the medium format, I saw someone was selling an uh Mamiya seven two. Mm, um, nice, is, nice. is that something that you've shot before? Mamiya seven two? Is that the rangefinder uh six six seven? Six nine? Oh is it six, the six yeah it looks like six, a kind of like a Yeah, it's like a compact rangefinder yeah, medium format. Texas but it shoots the it's bigger. It's not the Texas. It's, it's not the Texas. It's not the Texas like it. It's, yeah. it's yeah, interchangeable yeah. lens. But it's film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's film. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's got a great light meter. I've kind of turned I mean, my back on film. I hate to say it. I've got the M6. See, I think, but I, I, I think don't use the, it. Yeah, I, 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 I like having the control, see, and I just, I, I, you know, I started in 1992, so I've done a lot enough film. I'm good. You're good. No. Yeah, I, 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 did, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't. So you know, I know. Yeah. I know a lot of that photographers. Nice. I remember like when that Matt. came out. I loved it. I really wanted that camera, except for the focus distance. It's kind of like a Leica. You know, you don't, you can't get too close. But if you, you work close, with right? Leica, you probably don't care either way. So, I I like that. Yeah, yeah. I had an old RB Mamiya, which is just like you know, twelve things could go wrong at, the, at any one time, and you never know which one it is. <laughs> I remember I had one time on a job, feeling sweat leap off my forehead, as I was like trying to figure out which thing but uh that oh god i hate that <laughs> feeling 
<laughs> I've had that like back in the old days of Capture One when it would just like crash all the time. And like, you know, and, and tethering like an old Hasselblad or an old, you know, phase was like, you know, with Firewire 400, you'd always lose connection and be yeah. in the middle of a job. And, you know, you'd have the art director and the creative director and like everybody just like huddled around the yeah. computer and you'd be like, I don't, you know, you'd be like unplugging the battery and restarting uh, the people computer. Aren't, aren't and helping here. Reinstalling. If you know what I'm doing, then you can all have a coffee. You know, it's just exactly. But they would all be like just hu- yeah. hovering over uh, there. My PTSD comes in but, with uh, when I was in a band playing and on stage, you're just like, what the fuck oh, yeah. is going with this? Pedal board. Board. Is the ca- is yeah. pedal board. Yeah. And you have, <laughs> is it the amp? Is my 1960s amp? Or ugh. I had literally, I yep. still, I haven't played it. And then you, I haven't toured it in almost nine, nine years. And I still have dreams that it never goes well never there's always yeah. something technical that happens i got a pedal board right here you could fix i it's hate just that just some, there's just over the, pedal pedal over there yes. too yeah or, i'm not but no uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a, a good thing i was actually when i um when i shoot i usually don't have any um like people uh you know requesting tethered shooting so so i just shoot everything yeah. in the gfx and then just send them the results so i'm all good with that <laughs> lucky you <laughs> no crashing no cables so, it's funny. The, yeah. I, I, I sold one of my uh, Hasselblad adapters to some, I forget his name, real nice guy, but he does weddings. And he was asking me, like, how I can stand the stress of, you know, being like, you know, the head of a pin with these jobs where there's art directors and all these people around. And I'm thinking, like, you do weddings. That's even worse, you know, for me. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to, if you don't get that, then there's no do overs for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. I. I can mess it up and then I, try I need to think about half it. an hour. Yeah, sorry to bring that up. But I was just thinking like, really? If you can manage the stress of that, then you can manage the stress of having 10 people on your side working for you <laughs> to get this one thing done. Yeah, true. But I think, yeah. in people, I think in weddings, you can get a, you get sort of a routine, I guess, you know, like after shooting, I don't know, maybe 30 weddings, you know, kind of know when everything is happening. So yeah. I think it's kind of, you get a bit more relaxed. Yeah, I do one about every year. I get I get roped into one through somebody who knows somebody, and I I, I don't I'm not in yeah. the rhythm at all. So I'm like, please just tell. Even if it's stupid obvious, let me know what's going to happen and when. Yeah, so, of course. so I can be there. Because I, I start off in journalism, so I'm used to like knowing what might happen and try to be there to catch yeah. catch that thing. But uh, if you don't tell me right. that you can do some special Finnish family <laughs> thing, I'm going to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm going to be at the bar getting a drink, so you better exactly. let me know uh, what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Matt, you know, it's interesting. I have I have a bunch of other friends that are photographers that like you started like right out of school or in the 90s and shot only yeah. film and then ultimately by no by you know without choosing to do so kind of being forced to do so like had to make that transition to digital and like you all of those friends of mine could not give a shit about shooting <laughs> film again like they just they they're done with it yeah. they put it behind and i think it's just kind of like because you did so much of it and it was such a, a process yeah. that the I was gonna romantic, say, is the romance gone the romanticism is is gone from well, that uh, medium, perhaps. What I find freeing now, the, I know a lot more now than I did when you know ten years ago with the Photoshop stuff. I, I have so much more control in what I'm doing in the colors and the tones uh. and and the, you know all the burning, and dodging. While film, like different film stocks, will give you that baked in look. That it's it's a beautiful look, but there's you, you have no more choice. I mean, you have the choose you have the choice of mm. which film you're going to use. But there's like nowadays I can shoot in digital and I can make it look like uh, some film stock, and but more my version of what I would like that film stock to be. So I think in that sense I, I like the, I like the control. Uh, not that I'm a control freak too much, but but then again, yeah, being in the dark room, uh, I was never that good in there, you know. Uh, did you um, shoot Kodachrome, or was that there, already I- gone? That was that wasn't really used professionally, but I did sh- shoot a lot of it because it was so. It's like sh- photographing with Crayola, you know. All the yeah. colors were just ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I lived in Prague for six years when I was playing around with that, and all the all the colors there were really kind of muted, um, cool. pastelly stuff. So that would just kind of that and Velvia, except for the shadows would just be gone, you know. Yeah. 
Just, well, know. I kind of had a. I, I tried a roll of Elvia and uh, I kind of messed it up. I unexposed it, and the results weren't really that great. And yeah. I spent about I don't know maybe fifty euros on the whole experience. So exactly, yeah, I yeah, kind yeah. of quit That's... shooting Velvia after that. I mean, I like it. I, I follow a lot of people on Instagram who do film stuff, and it's beautiful. It's it, it yeah. has can have that nice softness, and you know the older cameras. And so I'm not against it. I just personally, I'm not. I okay. still have the M6, and occasionally when I see other people doing nice stuff with it, I'm like, I should I should use that, but I don't. <laughs> 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 I mean, if you were really like into like Daniel, like he's been doing his own oh, yeah. processing and, and scanning, um, but it's also yeah, and, and yeah, he, and he mean, also I, well, and he also yeah. got a scanner. So the point is that he's able to shoot a roll of film, process it, and scan it, and and have it completely. Oh, that's all you then. Yeah, I used to send it out and have somebody else's fingerprints on it, and that make me crazy. Right. You know, yeah, and it, for me, it's a you know, I'm not doing it professionally yet. Um, yeah. No. And if I do on a job, I send it out and, you know, I'm subject to however they process and, sc and scan it. Um, but part of it's almost been like a journey for me back in time to to appreciate how I'm shooting now. Yeah. And that I want to learn how to, you know, fucking up with all the chemicals. And I'm trying out these new chemicals that are coming, these mon uh, a mono bath for black and white film, which I'm curious about. Oh, cool. Um, Wow. And and doing color as well, um, and it's almost like an at this stage like an art project for me. Um, yeah, yeah, that's great. But that's what um, you want? But it's helping. Like we were talking about before, it's it helps me um, in my digital work and in professional kind yeah, of. It does. Anything that anything that taps Definitely. in your creativity and gets you excited yeah. about it, it's going to be good all around. So to go back to. Your, and and also slows you down. Yeah, yeah, it's probably some meditative process and waiting for the film and da da da. You know, now I wait for a retoucher. It's it's, it's but then they, they send me something in the morning. I'm like, uh. but um, going back to your earlier question, I think you should buy that camera. VMP <laughs> or the Mamiya. The Mamiya. Mamiya. I like the Mamiya. I yeah. <laughs> now I, now I have to decide what I you know, what I need what I can park with. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, the thing is, like, right now, this is, like, the freaking worst ever, you know, like, this time, yeah. like how it's just, you know, so many unknowns, we don't know how long it's going to last, we don't know if anything's going to happen to us or our loved ones, I mean, it's just, it's so fucking aggravating and stressful and anxiety. I actually just you know, forgot provoking. about it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the point Thanks. is, is that, <laughs> yes. Thanks, Thanks, Adam. That having some kind of a creative pursuit that is mm -hmm. meditative that slows your mind down, that takes you away from all of the other things that you're doing and really kind of lets you focus on one thing and one thing well and makes you excited about yeah. that. I'm all for nice. it, man. I think so I, oh, kitty. <laughs> kitty. I should be teaching second grade, but I'm doing That actually reminds stuff. me of the Netflix show my wife and I just started, the <laughs> Tiger King. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty I good. Everyone's so. watching that shit. <laughs> Dad had his cat up in the, in the frame, so. <laughs> so so matt so you're basically apart from still keeping your um hasselblad mount p45 plus back you're out of the medium format yeah. game i'm only keeping it because no one's buying it <laughs> how much are you selling it for yeah well, i've was, looked at a few listing, of them actually i see him going for three thousand so i tried for like two and a half i was even trying for i think i Put it by now for two thousand or something like that, but then then this thing all happened, so yeah. it's it's gonna wait. Right. But um, I just had it for it's just been sitting in the closet, not doing any, not me doing me any good. So poor thing. Why? I'm trying to be more Buddhist about my things. Just get rid of stuff. And just clutter. I don't need it. I like that. Yeah. I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah. Completely. I'm a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I collect. Dan Daniel suffers not, from not gear acquisition. I, I look around and I, you know, I hate. I'm looking around my basement. It's like I, I love old things. I love my grandparents' yeah, yeah. old things, and so even if it's not a short term, like my wife loves to get rid of everything. She will have like nothing yeah. in the house, and I have these like knickknacks all over the place. And right, that's um, my yeah. I have a lot of knickknacks and too many guitars and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I know that thing. Yeah. I like 
Uh, yeah, I just want a collection of brass things. That's all I want. Just a pile of brass, you know. <laughs> well, they're my group to talk about it. M cameras and yeah. lenses. <laughs> what um, what kind of guitars? Do you uh, like generally, play? a Telecaster shape. But uh, me too. There's, 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 yeah, you kind of guy. it's kind of raw. There's there's no hiding behind a Telecaster. There's, uh, so I actually, um, and I also have a. So Collings, it's a uh, it's like a Gibson Les Paul knockoff. It. That's very very nice, and I just need to play them more. Really, I've got yeah, a number of too. Telecasters in the closet. Well, number. I like yeah, that. I like a number shape. of them. Like that that, that implies more, <laughs> more than, than I two. Need, yeah, how many guitars can you play at once? <laughs> I I had a lot of guitars yeah. at one point, and then I sold a lot of them. Actually, I've got yeah, one down at Main Drag Music sitting on a wall in a clothes <laughs> shop. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned oh, yeah. if they don't open back up. I yeah, like those guys. They're good people. You know, I always sort of uh, played one electric at a time. And, yeah. uh, you know. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> but like when I, was, when I was touring, we had, we had a spare. and But I was in love with one guitar. To, like one guitar cameras for me, you can have. You could be in love with multiple cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, right. so guitars were much. I didn't really wheel and deal them. As I was not, not, you know, I, not. I started. Hey, I want to stick with like a seventy-four three thirty-five. I'll stick with that. And I had a Guild nice sixties Guild and um, sixty-three Jaguar. You know, like Ooh, certain nice. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay. But it wasn't like um, like the way it is now with cameras. Where I just like, hey, and then yeah, it's not for me. You know. You, <clears throat> Yeah, you, yeah. You let it go. You head over to the post office again, and uh, yeah, that's the thing. I used to, oh, I used dude, to be I was... into music as well, like doing a lot of like electronic stuff. And oh, yeah. when I got into photography, I kind of stopped creating music and just was all about starting, you know, to shoot. And so after I haven't used my gear for about a year, um, I started selling off most of the stuff. So you know, never looked back. So it's now all invested into cameras and lenses. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Well, now it's on my wife's finger. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh! I, I, I needed to propose. Nicely and done like, there. Right, that Jaguar can go. The uh, <laughs> three thirty-five can go. Yeah, go. yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I sold. I sold like I had an old an old telly from the sixties. I had a couple of seventies Strats. I had an old Vox amp. I had some crazy weird pedals, like all that stuff. So I kept a bunch of stuff. I mean, I. You know, but after, you know, after touring and just, you know, getting into photography, like, like Mark, I kind of like just dove full in. So playing for me now is purely recreational. I mean, I'd love to do, do it professionally again. I, that was a great time in my life, but it's funny because when I was a lot younger, like in my twenties, I used to get the want ad press, which was something that I know there was one in New Jersey and and I would also go to yard sales and you would find like, like guitars, like, you know, some lady would be selling like her son's like 1970 uh, uh, Mustang competition. Remember that? Oh, with yeah, the yeah, stripes, yeah. Yeah. You know, like a Fender Mustang and like a bird's eye maple neck, like crazy bird's eyed, you know, with a guild tube amp, like perfect condition. Like she just pulled it out from under the bed and like you get those. This for, is like, before a eBay? Bucks. Yeah. So, before nice. eBay. So I would scour... And I would buy and sell Mustang guitars, Mustang basses, Broncos, like stuff that were was attainable. The occasional like Stratocasters were were starting to like take off and things like that. But I would find like more of those like middle ground Gibsons that and Fenders. Yeah, and my, um, that was my theory. My, that? I'm selling a '66 Mustang, thinking that it would. I bought it oh, ten years ago, thinking it would depreciate because after the Tellys and Strats went up, this one actually right. <laughs> did did not. So my buddy, red. what color is it? My buddy bought nice. uh maybe like fifteen years ago. You got like a when was the Monterey Pop Festival? Is that like sixty one or something? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. So this was apparently played at the you know backstage oh, wow, okay. play. That was a, that was a story, and it had it was like burnt. It was really fucked up, <clears throat> and he got it for three grand at uh, Lark Street Music in Tina, which is an incredible vintage guitar store. Yeah. Um, and apparently now it's over like. 20, 20 grand. Yeah, that, that's the and hope, right? Skyrocketed. Yeah. Well, let's see if it's still worth that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I bought a I bought a sixty five telly on eBay in 1999 from a guy in Kentucky, and this was early days of eBay, and I was like, I was like, shit, you know, I'm gonna send this guy a couple thousand dollars. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. We we spent a lot of time on the phone. He sent me all these pictures. It seemed legitimate. Anyway, he sends me the guitar, and it's amazing guitar. I took the pickups out. I sent them to Lindy Fralin. You know that guy. Anyway, he's a guy that like builds pickups, and he started off by refurbishing old Fender pickups, and then he now does his own pickups. Yeah. So he rewounded them and repotted them and and matched them, and that guitar sounded incredible. And when I finally went to sell it. I took it to Yumanoff and like they took it apart and like, well, this is this was repainted probably thirty years ago. Um, this switch isn't right. There's a shim under the neck. Oh, <laughs> they found like so anyway, it doubled in value, you know, when I sold it, which was yeah. fine. But um it wasn't like my retirement yeah. fund. Yeah. I have throwing all that, throwing that, shit like that happens. But throwing that back to throwing that back to cameras, it's that's how I feel about certain cameras is you Oh know, yeah. We go back to you know, um, like we were talking about the VMP and like how those will retain value where a Q2 is just only going to go down and it's just about yeah. how far it goes down. And then, um, so certain cameras will, will, you know, almost that's what, be that's like really that nice thing. collective yeah. guitar. That's really the thing why I didn't get the GFX 100 because um, I'm sure it's going to depreciate pretty fast. So, yeah, I'm just... <laughs> waiting <laughs> hoping it's going to go down in price and then eventually well get they'll make it, one the size of the 50r you know <laughs> that will be amazing yeah that's that what i'm hoping be amazing because be i don't need the ibis i just need a, a little faster camera you know no but if they could take that technology look if they're putting that technology in the xt4 which is like kind of like who really gives a shit about the xt4 to be honest if they can put that in that camera they can absolutely 100%. put it in in the 50 megapixel equivalent there's no reason not to you know i mean f for for matt's benefit like daniel myself and mark we uh, have all shot fuji um the medium format mm -hmm. fuji cameras um so uh, you've obviously never i've used the, I use the smaller ones and i didn't like any of those no it, so, it, yeah. it but is, I've heard it's not even things, comparable but, yeah okay it's, you know i've used most of the fuji smaller ones and i've dumped all of them um yeah, but the, the fifty series is just in a league of its own as far as compared to other yeah. Fujis and even other full frame. Um, the only limitations are are the lens choices. Right, I have to I have to try renting. Right, that's the biggest try problem. Try rent one and check it out. See what when yeah, the smoke clears. Uh, it's a good time. Yeah. To give the uh, one hundred a try, and they're coming up with an eighty one seven. So oh, really, that's, that's yes. going to be awesome as well. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Or is it the farmers? same same size chip as like the Hasselblad and the Phase One and all uh, that? No, no, it's a bit smaller. So okay. I, it's as big as the Phase One. Well, I think it's, it's as big as the one you you have, the P40 size P45 wise. Plus. No, the, he's got the 45 oh, plus. But it's I think like the 45 a P40 maybe size. it's 33 times 44 millimeters. So maybe it's cropped. It's cropped. It's got a little. It's got a 1.1 1. 1 crop, I think. It's the Hasselblad came out. I think it's a 1.3 crop 1 .3, on, the, yeah. on the... It's yeah. like the uh, IQ I mean, look, it, it, It's the same size. I like how it's the same sensor. Even, 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 with, even with its crop, it's like the files are huge. Oh, do you remember, remember how Hasselblad um, came out with the first full frame medium format and they just made the viewfinder smaller to fit <laughs> instead of making the ship bigger? Remember that? That was, <laughs> that was right around like 10, 12 like, years ago. Sounds Classic like a, Hasselblad. A yeah. hustle blood okay, move. Let's get the marketing team yeah. on this. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm buying two cameras. You're, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, what are you buying? Uh, I think I might have to get that. What was that one you were talking about? Oh, I got to get that lens. I like a lens, a 50. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. I've been yeah, chewing on that for a while. Yeah. That's the 1.4. The 1.4. And yeah. the is Yeah. Yeah. When you get the uh, when you have hospital look at it, oh there you go, I'll take that. But uh, when you have uh, sorry, when you have like a look at, do you have to bring them the camera and the lens? To, yeah, so or? ideally, yeah, you yeah. Bring ideally, the body you're yes. going to use it mostly yeah. with, and they'll yeah. uh, pair it specifically for that. Did you go there? Did you go they'll there personally, it, or did I you send it all? No, okay. I I live about 
20 minutes, 25 minutes. So. I mean, it'd be worth, I'm in Brooklyn, so it'd be worth the drive. If they, yeah. do they see you on the same day and just check it out or? Yeah, so you just show up in the morning. Um, Sometimes. Especially, I mean, for film cameras, you actually have to leave it. Or for older lenses, you have to leave it because they have to open up the lenses. But yeah. for the newer lenses, uh, it takes about, I mean, 10, 15 minutes. Oh, really? The ideal thing they said is you yeah. get there first thing in the morning before they get kind of backed yeah. up with stuff. And if they can do it, they'll do it, you know, I've while never, you're waiting. Adam's like, had to wait because his M10, there was, you know, something serial number. I never got the yeah, M10 to take like, care of. wait a couple hours for it. Yeah. They ultimately wanted me to leave it. My So I brought them my M10 just because I was like, hey, could you guys give this a cleaning and whatnot? And they're like, oh, your serial number is within a range to where your that range of serial numbers had the tendency for the ISO yeah. dial to yeah. malfunction. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. So it's a free fix, but we just need it for a few hours. So ideally, just either come first thing or drop it off for a day or two. And then I went to do it, and then they called me, and they're like, oh, um, our machine that does that is broken, and we're waiting for a part from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right. Oh. Well, it's it, See, what happens is that if the ISO dial breaks – you know, like this little yeah, like yeah, thing yeah. that's in there, then it just gets stuck on whatever ISO setting oh, you're okay. at. Well, so I'm, I've literally just been leaving it one, at 100 because I don't want to be stuck at like 32. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually put mine in auto ISO, so it's on there most of the time unless I, I have to change it. If I'm in, if that's I'm in, now, if I'm in auto anything, it stresses me out. It's oh, weird, man. And not not that it should. No, I'm not saying that to be like uh, manual. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. Um, I guess, yeah. It, 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 if I if I don't know in my mind like exactly what it's at, it sort of uh, feels stressful to me. Which is for me, it's been working great. Like I've been shooting aperture priority since I don't know yeah. since ages. Unless unless I use flash, then I have to put it on manual, of course, but. It helps me a lot. You so just, you just you know, limit, what do you max out your ISO at? Uh, 3,200 or maybe 6,400. Yeah, 6,400. I think that's still usable with the M10. Yeah, 6,400. Yeah, it's usable. I've, yeah, I wouldn't go. What I, what I really dislike about the M10 is how you can't go to 5,000, 4,000 ISO. There's no increment in between 3,200 and 6,400. Yeah, okay. I didn't even look, yeah. Even, even on the this even on the auto? first world problem. Oh, come on, it's all it's all podcast. Maybe on the auto. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> the autos let you do all sorts of crazy stuff. So when you're in auto, it'll go. It'll select. I'm like not sure. I, I know some other cameras like when, uh, especially the Canon, when you're in auto uh, priority, whatever. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's weird like ones. Random though. weird <laughs> numbers you've never seen before. You know, and I borrowed that friend's uh, Sony one time. I um, a recent portrait and. Um, he wanted me to try the Sony with the Sigma 40 millimeter that was supposed to be this God's, you know, God made it himself, beautiful can, uh, lens. And it was, it's kind of interesting, it was, but I was using a light and he had it set on auto ISO, but he didn't tell me that. So I was, I kept oh. adjusting and nothing would change. And I was like, what is wrong? And there's so many buttons on the camera. I spent 10 minutes trying to figure it out. And then I looked at the ISO at one point and it said 12,500. I'm trying to make the sky dark, you know, and uh, and uh, and finally I just I had to give it up. My assistant was on his phone trying to read the directions, but in the end I used Canon. But at least it, it almost went in the water. Were you yeah. using a mirrorless Canon or uh, a DSLR? Uh, exactly, a five DSR. I thought about well, that camera DS. for a while because. The five DS. I was. I thought about the five DS or DSR, either one, for a while when I was kind of like in this weird transition. But then I just, you know, ultimately decided that I just don't want to go back to DSLR. That's just mirrorless, yeah. kind of yeah. where I want to be. Well, and, I'm excited for this. Yeah. I mean, not excited. I'm interested to see what this new Canon uh, is all about. The what is it? R five. Yeah. R five. Yeah. R five. What's okay? Is it similar to the there are? Is it? Like more pro version. Yeah, it's a more pro version of that. And it's supposed to come out pretty soon and it's mirrorless. So, yeah. I make a picture. Yeah, really? okay. The video is going to be 8K, uh, probably at 30P. Uh, you know, some of the specs are getting leaks very slowly, but the resolution hasn't been 
talked about or anything like that. But um, you know, yeah. search in search for that autofocus camera that you actually enjoy using, um, full frame autofocus. It it could yeah. be a, a good option. Yeah, that's that's a big part of part of it for me is like what's enjoyable to use like a lot of times i bring the canon and leica yes. and i just enjoy using the leica so much more just the feel and stuff right yeah and uh, the files aren't as big but you know well, i'd say to anyone out there um who's <clears throat> looking for an autofocus camera and maybe don't love the fuji look or don't want to be pigeonholed in the fuji look um and and kind of can a crop sensor really hold up i've really been enjoying the leica cl and oh, really? the images that I've gotten, um, I, I got it in a, you know, I got the body in a fair trade for the X-Pro3 from a guy. Um, oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. it's just the images are, first of all, so much more in line with the other cameras I'm shooting, colors, stuff like that. But, yeah. And right now I have the 23 uh, 2.0, and it's just in leagues from uh, from Fuji quality. So that's it. Have you picked up the uh, the CL? No, I've seen those in the shops. So I'm kind of interested. It looks just so small and it's cute. Yeah. So small, and there's like nothing to. You just you know the same. No, there's no ports on it. You can't tether. That's, you that's can't fine. do anything with it. It's yeah. literally got a little battery cover door for the battery and. Um, I and tried to convince my cover. wife she needs one, so so I can use it. Oh yeah. But, uh, so far, nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no dice. But it, I, it would be nice to have something small and autofocus that you can just, you know. I was I was doing like a little walk looking for people on the street to photograph in Brighton Beach and I, with a friend who had a Fuji. And he was just, you know, I'm like going up talking to people and trying to get them to agree to a portrait. And he's just like, you know, shooting from the hip and just like everything's <laughs> in focus. It's like, fuck you, man. Yeah. You know, it's kind of. Sometimes you don't want to. You don't want to think too much, you know. You want to, yeah. Point, I, don't know. I mean, literally point and shoot. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're pretty good files. It's just like, I don't know. It's one of those one of those things. Like, yeah, if light is good, then they're they're nice files, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I I tried the Fuji X one hundred V, which is like their little, the newest version of the compact, um, Fuji that has a, a lens Seems built so excited, onto right? it. 35 millimeter equivalent yeah, yeah, f2 yeah. lens and it's got like you know phase detect autofocus and right. process i mean it just it's fast and you can literally everything you anything you want to grab you can control by the it. phone as well which is pretty incredible yeah yes you can use the touch screen right. on the back yeah. when my daughter was born i bought the yeah. first 100 fuji whatever that thing was or s or i forget the name but i kept like missing the focus and i Oh, that thing. Yeah, atrocious. and even the files, like before Capture One could process the files, I'd use the Fuji thing, and I was putting the stuff in a stock as well, and it was just like, you know, you couldn't crop any, any of it because it was just barely big enough, and then I'd miss the focus, and yeah. I would say, like, if, if I'm going to miss the focus, it should be my fault, you know, I don't want the camera should be able to right. do it, and I got the that one and then the next one and I just each one yeah like, and then I got the next one and actually yeah, the, the fives right here it's it's okay. yeah <laughs> it's just like you're hope, hoping eventually you'll find that camera but I just the latest one is is by far the fastest without like but it didn't leaps do and bounds beyond uh oh no I just I'm so in love with shooting the yeah. the M series that I just I mean I got rid of all of my autofocusing Leicas and now I just have embodies and i just i just like the whole feeling of it i like the workflow i like how it slows things down i like how it makes me see more you know it's just, it's just there's a lot more you know it's just a lot more careful shooting i feel i just i and i still will shoot sometimes from the hip if i'm doing street shots i'll just i'll do zone focusing and i'll kind of just hold it and just you know if i see like an interesting looking person or couple and i just want to i'll zone focus it at, you know five seven feet and then i'll just kind of at that moment that i think i'm at that distance and half the yeah. time it works out i mean at, at the reception is my fi the most fun i have probably with my leica i have the 21 uh void lander 1.8 and okay. i throw a flash on manual and i said it's about five six uh aperture and i just i know my distance and i just kind of i don't i because you can't there's no viewfinder there's no frames for it so i'm just Right. shooting yeah. um, I feel almost like Bill Cunningham type of uh, yeah. 
Does it give you a vin- does the flash give you a vignette or oh. does it give the full um, spread? Depends on my exact settings. I could I can get a full spread. Um, yeah. And there's no either, distortion. Either way would be cool. Yeah. And a lot of times I do like to have a, a vignette. Uh, yeah. A lot of times I'll drag the shutter. You know, I'll be at like an eighth of a second. It feels um, more like a party that way. It gives it a look. You know. Yeah, because sometimes it, you try to get like everything so clean and and crisp in the exact way it looks, and sometimes it, it it's a little. It could be stale. Um, yeah. Really, what's fun is also it depends wedding to wedding. Even in the same room, if I go back to the same venue, it looks different. Um, yeah. Can be different. So I'd love to try that uh, twenty one. Actually, um, I've been looking at it because there's the new one, uh, right? It's out complete, the one point four. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. Have, I've never tried that. Yeah, the the, the one point four looks. That one point eight for the money is the best. Was I think I got yeah. an open box for like six fifty or something. It was. Oh, that's nice. That's cheaper than is the one four. Yeah, it's cheaper than one four. Yeah, tr- one four is like one thousand two hundred. I guess new. More or less. Yeah. yeah, but it's a lot cheaper than the Leica. <laughs> it is. Man. Oh God. I yeah. um. And for twenty one, I, I have only use that at a reception. I'm not using. I'm not, that's not my focal length for anything. I, I, I have twenty four the... Sony looks uh, for rent, and um, the Leica gave it to me for Japan. It was amazing. Really cool lens, but huge. I mean, it's yeah. It's it's really big. I've got the old uh, twenty one two point eight. I bought in like nineteen ninety eight. And then I sold it to a friend of mine three years ago, and then he sent it back to me a year ago to some, just to let me borrow it for apparently a year now. That's, he that's doesn't want it back. Oh, oh, really? Okay. He's like, you can have it for one day. That's it. That's one nice. day. No, no. It was like when you, he sent it to me, and I was like, yeah. so you want this back at any time? He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's it's a fun lens, but yeah, it's not, Is not that, that useful. Is that Elmer Ridge? Is that Elmer Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. What are you shooting most of your street stuff with uh, on your M10? Thirty-five and the seventy-five. Oh, I got the I got the uh, seventy-five. Oh, nice. The, yeah, the the two the two point oh. Let's see. Two point oh. Yeah, I think so. I should know this, right? Yeah, the APO, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a semi yeah. uh, I love it. Was I this or the, it was this or that oh. fifty? And I thought this would be more of a portrait lens, so I went that, with this. That was my Perhaps. favorite. That's my favorite portrait lens I've ever used. This one, hands down, yeah. The, the, trade, oh, trade you for that fifty. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I, I, would I mean, do Daniel that would do it because he can just get another second. fifty. No, <laughs> ah, Daniel. It's a bad, it's Daniel, a bad wait, deal for you. Wait till you try the Sumidoc seventy-five. I, I'm not trying that. <laughs> I tried I that Sumidoc seventy-five at, is that at the, the one like corner? event. No, that's an Octilux that you tried. No, um, Sumidoc is not being built anymore. That's a one point yeah, four. It's, it's an older lens. And I it's saw the one. Rated oh. I oh, sorry, those are the luck. That's why it's so huge. Yeah, it's rated as one of the best portrait lenses ever made. It's really amazing. And I it, really could kick myself for it. Use? Does it matter which uh, batch you get? No, not made, really. No, were they made you in get Canada? The, Germany. Yeah, you can get the Canadian version, which is cheaper. Yeah. And the Canadian was actually uh, Dr. Mandler's favorite because I think he... Uh, the, Mandler is the um, lens designer. So... Um, oh, I thought, you, I, I thought you said Mengler. That's what I thought he said. <laughs> no, no, no I'm not saying that. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't going to throw a German thing in there. But... <laughs> oh, shit. No, but like he designed the Sumicron. He designed the, yeah, that's it. That's it. the Sumilac 75 and the Sumicron 90 and all those classic lenses. And this was his favorite. So Nice. Yeah, it's amazing. So you've got the, the 75 Sumicron and the 35... Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I got 30, the 35 uh, F2. Got about that with, yeah. the, with the M6. Sumer, yeah, the and Sumer the Prime. 75 and then a 21. But sadly, nice. not a 50. All right, well, well. Those, are easy, those are easy to come by. <laughs> yeah. Are they? <laughs> well, this could have been an expensive chat yeah, for me, my friend. Now, going back to my... Are you German, by chance? Uh, who, me? Yeah. yeah. Mark. Okay. Yeah. But my uh, grown up, like in high school, my best friend, his father was Lithuanian or something, but he loved all the German things. He had a bunch of Leicas. And then oh. there's one, one thing that he said that always like rung kind of weird to us. It was like, he, he's always say, there's one thing more pleasurable than holding the German Leica, and that is holding the German Luger. <laughs> the pistol, the Luger. You know? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I, why are you telling us, Grandpa? <laughs> you know, it's just. <laughs> Yeah. And then he, he had a, yeah, anyway. You didn't. I don't remember seeing any Lugers around the house. No, lots of no, Leicas. I, 
Yeah. yeah. Remember, too many like us. No, no Lugers. <laughs> I, I, had the, I had the friend in high school who had the, his first camera was a Leica M6. It's like, it's, That's not a bad first camera. No, it's not bad. Yeah, that was actually my no. first when I got seriously uh, in, back into photography. I got a D700 and um, M6. So, so one for film and yeah, the D700 just, you know, walk around digital. And uh, uh, yeah, I love that M6. I like uh, that camera. Yeah, D700? Yeah, it's funny though. I mean, I, I've been I've been looking back at old photos, you know, digital photos and some of the digital cameras, like I look at the files and I'm like, oh, these files are fucking horrible. <laughs> and I'm like, and I shot professionally with these cameras, and I'm yeah. like, God, like I feel, ba- I almost feel bad that like I would, but like Matt said, back in those days, full frame digital cameras really kind of sucked. Yeah, you know, there was nothing like really spectacular, yeah, sure. and the only really w- the only way to get like a gorgeous digital um, image was with like yeah. medium format. And then I look at like the Hasselblad H3D31 image, and there those images are just incredible. They're gorgeous, you know, the color, the tones, the focus, the separation, like everything about those yeah. files. You know, regardless of the lens that I was using, they're just absolutely incredible. So, I think that one one thing that Daniel and I have talked about, and I think I've probably even talked about it with Mark, is how the evolution of digital cameras has happened so rapidly. If you think about the evolution of other mediums that, and, and, and every time something becomes somewhat obsolete, it gets pushed Mm. aside. So to give you an example, like the CCD sensor, that original Kodak sensor that really made it's, it's, you know, really got exciting when it was in medium format cameras, like the Hasselblads in the early phase. It was really exciting when it was in like the M nine and M nine N that sensor was replaced by the CMOS sensor, and that was it. It instantly hit mm-hmm. obsolescence. And, and a few of us now are, are, are buying and getting back into those old CCD, CCD yeah. sensor M cameras yeah. because the look is so gorgeous and so unique, and the color is so beautiful, and there's something so aesthetically pleasing about the look of those files just straight yeah. out of camera. Yeah, yeah. I would love to have the full frame so, um, medium format sensor of CCD, but they're still pretty expensive. Mm. For example, a phase one IQ 180 or something like that. But uh, prices are still over I don't know, something like 3000 for one. So I've got something in my drawer right here. That's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I think the P45 is not, is, is it, it's a bit smaller than full frame, right? Yeah, it's P45 plus it's, uh, but okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, yeah, I think, what do you say, 1.1? 1. 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> ideally, yeah, I'd be looking. So, it was like the P40 Plus was like a 1.3 crop. P40 Plus was a 1.1. 1. 1, and then it was like the P60 or 65, I think, 65 yeah. Plus was okay. full frame. Yeah. yeah that, back in those days. And I remember, like, I could afford, I really couldn't, but I ended up buying the P40 Plus because that was like, like within my price point, you know, yeah. all things included. That's that. That was as far as I could go, and I actually I love those. Files. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, still going back. Through. Whenever I dig through the archives, it's just so nice to. I mean, now that I know so much more about Photoshop and processing, I can really, you know, a mediocre file can come to life, you know, because I can just just pull it around and make it into something good. So, and I think that the the interesting thing is like. If there were a way, so like the thing that Daniel and I have talked about, and I'm just going to stop saying this, the thing that we've discussed in the past, because I don't remember who I've talked about it. I'm just going to assume I've talked about it with everybody except for Matt, who's new to the conversation, is how fucking awesome it would be to be able to take some of these older sensors and put them in new bodies. So like case in point, like put the old phase sensor in a new phase system so that you could access it, you know, you know, appropriately in a new modern workflow having a good lcd screen and all that tethering and all same thing with the m9 sensor m9m sensor being able to put that ccd sensor in like an m10 body so that you could actually really you know cruise with it you yeah. know really work you know kind of use like a current workflow because as our workflows change we want our cameras and our systems to kind of move right. with that i would love if, if there's a way just just to get a 
take an old iPhone or whatever and weld it to the back of that P45 Plus just so I could see on the screen. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's potato exactly. chip delivery. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to throw it out here because I want someone to make this. Um, and I've thought about this for a while. I want a film camera with an electronic viewfinder with, um, so you can preview the image before... It can be marketed a thousand different ways for beginners, for you know, people wanting to get into film or whatever. But it sh- shoots film, but I you have it. the electronic viewfinder, so you're able to preview your exposure and take a lot of the guesswork out of. Uh, Interesting. And you kind of blend digital and. Uh, and then Adam yeah. thought maybe you can also capture with a digital sensor, but I don't think that you know that would be possible. That'd be, but that'd be the, the new Polaroid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I remember when I when I first got the Polaroid back for the Mammy, I was talking to an older photographer, and I was like, so this basically takes all the stress out because you know you have the image the right way or the exposure. And he's like, no, no, it only takes half of the, the pressure because you could still be wrong. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so, well, 50% less pressure on the good. job. I'll is, take it. Is, that's not a bad but Remember when, when, when digital first came out, they still had all these old film cameras? The, the point and shoots and they were pretending they were digital they called them digital but you would send it in and they'd process the process the film and scan them and send you back a disc so there, thereby it was digital <laughs> you remember okay. oh. <laughs> no I yeah, wasn't was part cool. of that I got in just after <laughs> a lot of shenanigans going on during the transitions yeah wow. but I remember right before digital yeah. hit I was I finally reached what I thought was like where I needed to be I had to just house blood for portraits and then I had Leica for extraneous weather stuff and that was like I was just going around with like one bag and those things and I was like I've made it and then digital came along and I was like no start again but um, <laughs> did you use the um, house blood oh. H system or did you use the um, the old one the V system the V yeah I had the two two bodies several backs cool. and I had a 120 I think was a portrait lens beautiful and a 50 yeah. and mm, an 80 which I didn't really like but yeah, I just 120 macro. I, I don't, it might have I think been a macro. 120. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I just that have the 80 nice. that I'm using all the time, but I'd love to have some some more lenses for that. Yeah, I'm just kind of sad. I, I I sold them off to. It was, I got that when I got the H system. I got the converter for the film um, with the old lenses, and uh, just the focus is so hard. I went to see. I went to see. An, I went to see an eye doctor right away, thinking I was going blind, but it was just that you know. <laughs> It's so hard to do it on digital. There's no, there's no forgiveness anymore. Yeah. So I traded those all in for H lenses, and had I waited a couple of years, the price might have come back up. But, anyways, here we are. I wish yeah. I still had a body just to hear Can't the clump, worry about it. clump, clump. It's a nice feel, nice sound. Yeah. I think we should. I think I, the next I've... trip, next space mission, should be go up to the moon to get those old cameras. That would be yeah. so oh, rad. The yeah. up there? Yeah, the lenses. They're probably well irradiated and full of Martian goo or whatever, but probably. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be cool. I mean, it'd, it'd be two, twofold. Like, number one, you'd prove we were up there for all those weirdos. And number yeah. two, it'd just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get those back. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. <sighs> all right, guys. Well, look. This was this was actually so <laughs> it's awesome. very pleasant to talk. <laughs> very pleasant and very expensive um, for me. And and yes, <laughs> yes. The, uh, so so basically, the net net result of this conversation is that Daniel is going to end up buying a like MP and yeah. a Mamiya uh, Seven yeah. Two system. So he's in the hole for a lot. Um, Matt, you're going to be in the hole for now a Sumo Lux at the <laughs> very end. Of the GFX One Hundred. <laughs> yeah. But I, and I, perhaps, also, perhaps I also GFX. like the 7514 too, so it's a good time, you know? It's a good time right. to buy. Right. Yeah. Somebody somebody wanted this P45 Plus, I thought I heard. A, <laughs> well, Maybe. I, I just need something oh. to put it on. That's the only problem right now. Oh, you can put it on anything. Yeah, but you can start yeah, with the back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, what Mark's spending his money on from this conversation. Maybe you, you kind of kept yourself like Mark just wants other people to spend their money. Oh no. Uh, I, no, no, not really. Yes, I, I enjoy watching that. Well, he did. Buy, he did just get a thirty-five FLE. 
<laughs> Whoa, that's a the holy. That's why and I'm I can tell you now just to quick. I got the FLE, so yeah. And and I can honestly say, from looking at the images that he's shared with me from the FLE, um, I want one so bad. Like I, I, as much as I love the Zeiss and the look of the Zeiss, and oh, I think the Zeiss is yeah. so perfectly paired with the M9M, the organic look that you're getting from that 3514 FLE and the separation it just has that look that just is it, it has that same feeling I got when I was looking at the Mark, can you send me images some? I just love send you some more send me some FLE images yeah sure I can because do. I sat down with a guy to buy his FLE and I got well on my own will I bought his uh 35 Sumicron the King of Boca one from Germany, yeah. and I love it, and I saved a lot of money by not buying the FLE from him. Um, and then I, you know, uh, heard you love the Zeiss, Adam loves the Zeiss, and now you, now you're like, well, I like the FLE. It's a, it's, it's the best. He got rid of his Zeiss. Um, I, I only got rid of the Zeiss because uh, it was broken, uh, so um, I kind of gave it to the shop and got the FLE. But oh, I mean, don't get you me wrong. It, just you know. Yeah, you can trade it in. You can trade it in. You trade it for the FL, yeah. It's a good shop. Yeah. You should keep it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, don't get me wrong. The Zeiss is really amazing as well, you know, for, yeah. for everything. But, yeah, I just thought, okay, I just jump right in and just get the FL, you know. I had it two times before already, so. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's I sold charm. it, regretted it. Yeah. Bought it again, sold it again, regretted it. You know, you know that thing. I, you know. I, I hear, yeah, I hear that a lot. That's, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Could, yeah, and if you could send me an email with all everyone's emails and kind of contacts, sure. just so I can LinkedIn. Yeah, and, and let me just reiterate. So, um, everybody. So, if you're listening to this and you've you've made it all the way to the end, um, congratulations and thank you. We're all we're all grateful that you're here with us because um, we're all in this together and we're sharing our conversation. Um, and this conversation is, you know, it's first world problem. So these are fun things to think about. It's kind of like, you know, thinking about what you do if you won the lottery. Um, but at the same time, it's also just a fantastic way for a bunch of like-minded people to connect and talk about uh, photography and, and gear and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you're still with us, uh, make sure to please follow all of us on Instagram. So Daniel, your Instagram. Uh, Daniel G. Silbert. So you can find it uh, Matt? You know, even through the ISO three, uh, 320's Instagram as well. Right. Matt, your so Instagram. The Matt Carr. Or the Matt Carr, if you like. Uh, Mark? It's Mark Holstein. That's M-A-R-C dot H-O-L-S-T-A-I-N. Mine's Adam Lerner. And uh, we've also got a Brooklyn Photo Works um, Instagram as well, where we're going to be posting more and more about the ISO 320 podcast and other good little nuggies out there. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I had a great time. I'm sure that we will get this group together again because obviously we left it and there's a lot more stuff on the table for us to talk about. So thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon.